that's who you were talking about we're talking about cultural rage and you were talking about the guy who uh so you're saying basically that 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 these men like not i'm sure not just men but the men you were talking about they feel separated from their heritage yeah i think they don't feel like men you know because like maybe their women have a better education than them and so they look at themselves as stupid like their knowledge or whatever kind of you know information or like skills they possess are worthless because they can't get money you know what i mean and it's like what is money man it's like you know well the hawaiians were also a warring tribe i mean there there, there was like there was always confrontations at times and and then the system of kapu you know mm -hmm. and and with the the hierarchy and the royalty i mean there was like there was some violence there but it, it, like with american tribes like um the apaches uh the sioux um the oglala uh the southern tribes the seminoles they all you know they were they were uh there were wars at times and they were they were they, they lived with a warrior tradition you know and Hawaiian people had that you know and it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing you know but um, that's a, that's an incredible thing to lose it may mm -hmm. seem ironic yeah, or, man. or backwards you're but, right man you know Hawaii was a warring um, people but um there were wars over territory but King Kamehameha stopped all the wars mm -hmm. He did. He consolidated the islands, yeah, right? Yeah, what he did was he turned it from a chiefdom to a kingdom. Mm -hmm. He conquered all the islands individually. Some of them were given to him because they didn't want to have any, you know, war or fight, fighting. They didn't want any any death to come to their, their island, so they just, you know, graciously handed it over to the king. And what happened was there were there was nothing to fight for anymore. And that's what happened, man. Like, the second Kamehameha, he was already used to foreign influence, you know? And um, his stepmother, Kaahumanu, she was already used to that foreign influence too, you know? And so it's like, in their minds, things change, and so they get away with the Kapu system. But during Liho Liho, he's the second Kamehameha, he inherited this kingdom he didn't have to fight or work hard for it you know what i mean it was, given so to it, him. it was given to him and he didn't value it as much as his father did because he didn't have to work hard for the things that he got he was just like passed down you know what do you do just sit around on a throne and like tell people what to do all day you know i don't know but well that's pretty common i mean i've learned in my own life as soon as i stop respecting what i've got that's when i'm gonna lose it yeah you know for sure man yeah that's when you lose it yeah absolutely because you lose the value for it you mm -hmm. know you don't have you don't value it the same as you, as you used to a lot of americans think that that you know hawaii was just so glad to become a, a state and uh i think the truth is that the truth is that um from what i've under heard and understand is that it was basically it, it was the lesser of like two evils because it was there were other people you know who were interested in hawaii and it's like if, if we we're going to be forced to be a part of some big country it, it the united states is our best choice but it was like no, man, some kind of we arm twisting it, thing man. We, really we would we would have rather been f part of england man oh that's england right that's right France. and clinton who was it that made an apology to the hawaiian people President not too clinton. long ago it was clinton yeah yeah i mean it's like we were forced to man nobody wants to be forced to do something you know what i mean yeah hey man i don't know that was it that was the first time i really realized that hawaii was taken by force yeah hawaii was taken by force it was man and um the lesser of two evils <laughs> I don't think too many people think like that you know and right I'm, I'm gonna like shut my mouth right now <laughs> no you don't have to hold back I'm serious I'm here to listen to what you have to say anything you want to say and if you decide when you see it that you don't want it published I'll cut it out 
Well, you know what it, you know what it is with me. It's kind of hard because my grandfather, he's Hawaiian, French, and English, mm -hmm. and his ancestors, his like grandfathers, grandfathers, whatever, they came from England, and um, his on his mother's side, his grandfather came from France. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like I'd rather be English or French. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, there's some pretty good things about being an American or whatever, being a part of America, I yeah. should say. Yeah. And, um, you know. Well, how, how does that affect what you have to say? I mean, it's like, does it make you feel differently or, or you know? Cause yeah, man, it was the American military that came in and just took over, man. They took over with great force. They intimidated and conquered not only... Hawaii but everywhere everywhere that they you know they made a territory they just like went in and like conquered these people and now all these people feel displaced man you know it's like so sad well you, your economy was taken away mm -hmm. which was um, subsistence farming and uh, you know na what you'd call natural living um, your religion was taken away because the Hawaiian religion was suppressed by by Jesuit priests and by the, you know the missionaries who went over there. The Kaabi tree on the Big Island has thorns that'll go through a Michelin tire, and it was planted to keep make Hawaiians wear shoes. It's not native to Hawaii, and um, you know so your religion was suppressed, your culture was suppressed. Um, yeah, they took away the language. Yeah, your Those language American was suppressed. Military, they put a ban on all native Hawaiian I mean in all public and private schools in Hawaii in 1896 just three years after the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy and um, man they took away the language and then the, the culture started to dwindle you know people started to be ashamed to speak Hawaiian when you went to school if you spoke Hawaiian you get lickings from your teacher you know and it was just so sad, man. Nobody ever deserves that. And nobody would ever choose that. You know what I mean? Like, that is not the lesser of any evil. I think that's the bigger evil. That's just evil? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's that's like your grandmother and grandfather's language, you know? I mean, it really is. It is. And to be told you can't speak Our your own language. language, man. Yeah. Like, the Hawaiian language is beautiful. I have a dictionary at home and I read it occasionally. I don't know a lot, but I have a few words. But I love it. I love it. I love it. And, um, yeah, so... Um, but you know what, man? Um, you know, I don't know, man. I think it's a trip. The language was reinstated in 1978, the year I was born, you know? And I'm super lucky that I got to grow up being able to learn Hawaiian culture in school. I mean, it's sad that I had to learn it in a school, you know. Rather than at home. Rather than at home, for sure. But, you know, I'm super stoked that I was able to do that. And, um, you know, I surround myself with pretty positive people who have respect for, um, you know, culture in general culture and art and language. Morning.